everybody, I'm Soledad O'Brien and I'll be moderating this conversation today. Now, I could introduce Pharrell to you as a 13-time Grammy winner. I could uh, tell you about his producing or the fact that he's an artist, a songwriter, a fashion designer. We could talk a little bit about his philanthropy. Uh, you all know Judge on the Voice. Um, I could tell you about the restaurant and cocktail lounge that he owns. Um, but I'm not going to do that. I'm actually going to focus today on Pharrell and his passion for education. And you all know about Jeffrey Canada's passion for education um, and his groundbreaking work um, and really pioneering work, I think it's fair to say, on the Harlem Children's Zone. He is the president, and Harlem Children's Zone was founded back in 1990, so we're talking about 30 years now. Today, it serves 13,000 children and families in a 90 seven block area in central Harlem, New York. So gentlemen, let's start our conversation about education. Now, I know you met, or I read that you met at a party. And in fact, Pharrell sought you out, Jeffrey, that Pharrell wanted to meet you and kind of pick your brain. And I'm curious how that first conversation turned into a collaboration. So Pharrell, why don't you start me off and, and tell us what did you want to get out of Jeffrey Canada? Well, um, first of all, thank you for doing this. And thank you as well, Jeffrey. And um, thank you to Google for this incredible platform where they keep flexing on us and giving us different uh, uh, platform setups. Um, clearly, this is the most sophisticated way to connect um, uh, today. Um, but I met Jeffrey through, um, I want to say it was a retirement dinner and party for Mr. Ken Chanel, uh, an incredible human being, first and foremost. But I'll say that, you know, one of the most incredible African-American CEOs, I think, our nation and our world has ever seen before. And I was just so humbled to be there as one of his guests. And when I heard that him and Jeffrey were actually uh, roommates in college, uh, Ken introduced me to Jeffrey, and I was just so impressed by um, all the things that I'd heard about Jeffrey, but when you meet him and you've seen the, you know, waiting for Superman, you've seen all those things, but when you meet this man, you just understand why um, he was able to transform Harlem from, from uh, what it was uh, into what it's turned into now. I mean, it, the man's educational effort and intention um accidentally gentrified Harlem, um, something that he regrets when he talks about it because they've done so well. And I just thought, man, if I could have that kind of expertise, that kind of lens um, lend itself to, um, you know, our MSA where I'm from, it would be, it would be a game changer. Um, and I think they do, they're doing great things back home uh, in Virginia Beach, and in the Norfolk area, um, but it takes a village, you know, and to have this guy, um, you know, lend his expertise and lend his 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 uh, ideation um, to our MSA would just be a game changer. And so that's what I talked to him about, um, but it was, it's been a dream, you know, and then to go and visit his facilities and to see how they have absolutely transformed people's perspective, uh, uh, perspective of how important education is to a community. It's just been a game changer. Jeffrey, you've been doing this for 30 years at Harlem Children's Zone. What did you, from the beginning, learn now when you look back? What were the big things that maybe went in thinking one way and have really changed your mind that you were able to tell Pharrell about as he thinks about how to bring some of these changes to his hometown? So, so uh, Soledad, uh, for the first part of my career, I kept looking for the magic bullet. I kept looking for the one thing that would work. And I started with early childhood. And then I got to, you know, up to 12 years old and I'm working. With, but in the end, the data was not showing me that what we were doing was successful. And when I began to think about this comprehensive cradle to career, focus on rebuilding community, cleaning it up, eliminating graffiti. I just thought, you know what, this is so big, I don't know if anyone is gonna believe 
uh, that an organization could actually do this. Uh, and for years, my self-doubt, right, that some an idea this big, you could actually carry it out, right? Because I'm, I'm thinking I'm, I'm, a, I'm a black man, grew up in the hood in the South Bronx, and I'm talking about transforming an entire community. Uh, and there weren't a lot of people, to be totally honest, who thought it could be done. Uh, and I think over, over the years, as we began to show evidence, more and more people uh, believed. So I, I think one of the, the great messages for me was, uh, don't simply decide that something is too big for you to do, and there's no way that you can figure it out. Uh, if you put in the work and you put in the effort, you know, some of it was God. And I, I just have to say that because uh, there were things that were happening that just suggested to me uh, that there was no way that I could simply draw this up on a blackboard. And, and I feel like that's the reason I connected with Pharrell. Uh, you know, it's, it's interesting. Whenever you introduce Pharrell and people introduce him and they go to, and I sit there and I'm like, Damn, that is Pharrell, but that's not the Pharrell I know. All the, I know a guy who is passionate about his community, who remembers growing up in Virginia Beach when nobody knew who he was, when he didn't know what his life was going to turn out to be, and just fate interacted in a way that led him to be on this path, and he wants to give back. And I felt that from him when I first met, uh, and I said, I got to help this guy in every way possible to do what he what he's called on to do uh, in his own community and in Norfolk. Pharrell, talk to us about your philosophy around education, because I think the two of you come at it from a little bit of different perspective. So why don't you start for us? Well, I well, I, you know what? You're correct. We do come at it from uh, two different places. One person is a professional and has the expertise and, and obviously the experiences. And then I am someone who is from outside of the sector who has, I have, I wanna say notable experiences, but I'm the novice. Um, and if anything, I'm just a, uh, I'm a, I'm a galvanizer and I can spot the talent and I know who to put together. Um, but Jeffrey is an educator. Um, Jeffrey has, has the degrees, um, and he has the ingenuity to build a system. Um, that's what we're working on right now with uh, Catherine Kimmel and Artemis, um, with their, their group to help us build what we're doing with Yellow. Um, and Jeffrey has so graciously decided that he would help us as well. Um, but again, I want to be very clear to not only you, Soledad, and, and I always say this to Jeffrey, um, but I'm a novice. I'm a novice. I just know that when I look over my shoulders, and Jeffrey's heard me say this before, when I look at my over my shoulders and I look at the constellation that is my life, I recognize that the most shiniest points are when my educators saw something in me beyond our locality, beyond our geography at the at that time because there was no music industry where we were but they saw something in me they saw propensities in me that i didn't see in myself and i want to even the odds i want to make it so all the kids that weren't really sure what they were going to do and how serious they were going to take their educational career because your educational career is a career by the way it's a lot of work and and you're spending a lot of time and you don't always know where it's going to go. But with the right education and the right teachers, um, you too can uh, have a bright and shiny constellation. It's not perfect, but a constellation nonetheless. And that's what our aim is uh, with Yellow. That's what we want to do. Again, it's not flawless. I'm a novice. And that's why the, the, the first thing I wanted to do was surround myself by masters. It's no different than any other collaboration that I do. When I work with musicians, um, I work with I try to work with the best because I feel like not only is the product going to be great, but the process is going to be educational for me. And I think, um, you know, you know, in our in, in our educational endeavor here, um, it's no different. I wanted to work with the best. I wanted to learn from people who are really good at it, people who have done it before many times over. 
So Jeffrey, your philosophy, uh, and I was stunned once to read about you sort of saying in a nutshell, don't give up, like just don't give up on kids. But your philosophy around education to me seems to be more about how the world is changing and they need to be prepared for a changing world. Yes, well, you know, I, I, I think our poor children, our children, children of color, uh, are often so limited in their view of themselves and of the world, of who they are. Uh, and uh, so much of that has been intentional. Uh, you know, when, when I think, if folks haven't seen the movie Hidden Figures uh, about these African-American women who were called computers and helped get the first uh, astronaut uh, to the moon. I mean, when I grew up when this was all happening, I loved the astronauts. I didn't know a black person was anywhere involved in this. And if I would have heard black women, that they were the smartest mathematicians in the United States, it would have changed how all kinds of uh, folks who were growing up in those communities thought about themselves, thought about their abilities. Black girls would not be thinking math is not for me. I'm not good in math. I can't do it. They'd be saying, of course I'm good in math. Look at what we do as a people. This has been hidden from us. Those, those visions of ourselves have been removed. So my belief is we've got to rebuild into our young people an ability to expand their vision of themselves. I got to let them know the world is larger than Harlem. It's larger than New York. And your place in it might be in Harlem, but it might be somewhere, maybe in L.A. Uh, it might be in Philadelphia. Uh, that this ability to uh, prepare young people for a world that is going to change constantly. Uh, that the job you have now is not going to be the job you're going to have in five years and the job you're going to have in 10 years. Our young people have to be prepared for that. And I think you do that by giving them a world-class education. You give them an education and you expose them to things that blows their minds, right? That they say, wow, I didn't know you were going to take me there. So, yeah, we, do we sponsor trips for our kids to go over to Africa? Absolutely. Do I think that's part of their education? Sure it is. Do we send our kids to a school in the Bahamas where they teach them to swim in the ocean with sharks? Yeah, I wouldn't do it just for the record. Uh, but these kids want that experience and it's great for them because it changes your life when you've got experiences like that. And you know, the, the, the part solar there that where I think Pharrell and I are in sync when it comes to education is we wanna offer young people a world-class uh, view of their abilities, and we want to expose them to lots of things they would have never come in contact with. Uh, and he's going to count on folks like me to make sure they have the best curriculum and the best teachers. But this idea of how do you imbue young people with a spirit uh, that uh, brings them joy, uh, that the joy isn't from alcohol and drugs, but it's because I can play music, or I'm a great dancer, or I'm a wonderful poet, this is what we have to do uh, to save our kids. And I think that I'm counting on him to bring his expertise into this. Uh, and he's counting on me to bring my expertise into this while we create something new uh, for the young people in Virginia. Pharrell, are you, do you have concerns about some things that might not be replicable? I, I did many, many years ago now a, a documentary on Harlem Children's Zone. And as you well know, there's lots of funding that exists in New York City that doesn't exist in many other parts of the country. And so sometimes that's a challenge as people try to recreate what's happening there. What are some of your concerns and how do you think about overcoming them? Well, I mean, I think you've just laid it out. I mean, the 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 math isn't the same. It's not, and the and and nor is the need, right? Uh, the population is completely different. Um, but that's not to say the least of us don't deserve um, the same opportunity, you know. And um, solutions wise, you know, we are talking to the people with the big pockets and the bigger hearts. Um, and hopefully, um, you know, they will exercise their big minds uh, to make some big changes and, and contribute. It's the, it's the only thing we can do. And I mean, of course, we, we, we also invest ourselves. Um, I just know that I wouldn't be here without, the, you know, God's grace, his goodness, 
the goodwill of, of teachers that saw something in me, I wouldn't be here. So it's my job to, we often say give back, but I'd also like to give forward, right? There's, it's, not, it's also my responsibility to give forward in the form of donating as much as I can, in the form of raising money, and, and more importantly than any of it, raising awareness. Again, there are some good uh, educational systems intact back home in our MSA in Norfolk, Virginia Beach, Hampton, Newport, no, you know, the whole entire Hampton Roads. There are some good um, programs intact, but it could always be better. We could always challenge ourselves. You know, if we make sure that no one slips in between the cracks, then we are truly even in the odds. And that's what it is that that I want to do. I think that's what um, Jeffrey sought out to do in Harlem. And I mean, like I said, he did so much of a of a great job that it ended up changing the face of Harlem. I mean, literally, there is a Gucci uh, in Harlem. There is um, there are. Um, let me get my grammar correct because I'm on with an, an, an educator. But there are many, 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 many Starbucks in Harlem. Like, who would have ever thought? And that's because this man had a vision that education was the glue that was going to not only bring the community together, but also, like, hold it together. And, uh, and again, I just want that for where I'm from. And, and, and by the way, if we get it right, you know, Catherine Kimmel will tell you from Artemis, the Artemis agency, she'll tell you. My whole thing is nail it and scale it. If we get it right, we replicate. And, and, and Jeffrey's on board with that as well. In our last um, remaining minute, Jeffrey, I'll give you the final word if I can. How do you think about success? I always find it in education, and we all have kids here, right, that it's not always you do this and three weeks later you reap the benefits and you can measure success. I think for a lot of kids, success clicks in six months, a year, five years later, you realize what you did over here is, is you know, was a win. How do you think about what is success and how to measure it? This is such a great question, Soledad, because one advantage I have over a lot of folks, I've worked in the same community for 35 years. So I'm often bumping into someone and, you know, kids, I run into one of my kids here now, like 30, 35. And they're like, you remember me? And I always lie. Yeah, I remember you. And I'm thinking, actually, I do remember you. You're that kid who was telling me off and cursing that. And you know what they, you know, Mr. Canada, I got in a little trouble, but I remember what you said. Uh, and I went back to school and I just want you to know uh, that now, and they'll tell me they're working down in Midtown. And I'm just sitting there saying, you can't count kids out. You have to be honest with them. You have to give them the experiences and they may not be able to hear it right now, right? Uh, they, they might even reject it. Some of any of us who, who are parents know if only our kids listen to everything we said, right? But if you're honest and if in the end they knew that you were being honest and acting with integrity and acting in their best interest, I have found that almost all of them come back to those points that you made. You know, one of the things I'm proudest about about the Harlem Children's Zone, yeah, we eliminated the achievement gap and you can look at our test scores and that's all there. But out of all of our kids, the thousands and thousands of kids, I've only had one kid to ever go to jail uh, that we know of and we've looked all over. You know why? Because kids who know they have a team behind them, they, they know they have people that will be disappointed if they do the wrong thing, who believe in them, uh, they tend to go and make sure they can reach their full potential, which is all we want for kids. We want them to reach their full potential. And I think that's our job. That's why I'm part of Yellow and I'm happy to be there because why not give it to those kids in the same way we're giving it to our kids in Harlem. Uh, and you know, if I know Pharrell, uh, we'll figure out how to make it work. Very worthy investment on all fronts. Pharrell Williams, Jeffrey Canada. Nice to chat with you guys. It was so nice. Thank you, Jeffrey. And thank you, Soledad. And thank you, Google. Yeah.